Good day chaps, so this is the second part of the Vickers main battle tank video and is appropriately on the second vehicle in the series, the Vickers Mark II which is a very strange vehicle as in a sense it doesn't truly exist being either a variant of the Mark I or the Mark III depending on the date and while it does get recorded as the Mark II we'll explain a bit more as we go on. The Vickers Mark II is one of the most enigmatic of vehicles much has been written about it, mostly online, and most of it's also incorrect. The most common mistake attributed to literature about this vehicle is around its missile layout. As we discussed in our previous video, Vickers had originally envisioned the Mark I for domestic use as well, to come with swingfire missiles. On design 505-28T, we see a pair of missiles located behind the rear turret bustle. Although this design did not progress, and Vickers focused on the cheaper version for India, which was not allowed swing fire, the idea remained on their minds, and so once India had gone solo, Vickers was able to work on developing the tank for other buyers. Two variants came out of this, one with a pair of swing fire missiles located on either side of the turret, which were inset and would raise up to 45 degrees and be able to fire four missiles in total. This model was built by Vickers and displayed at Farnborough, but no sales were generated. The other vehicle was the Vickers Mark I-I, or Improved, which had the American engine. The notion to put swing fire on vehicles was a Vickers fascination, and it's joke they tried to put it on everything from tanks down to the regimental mascot goat. They had tried this before with a Vigilant missile, and would do so with other missiles too. At some point, swing fire has been on helicopters, tanks, cars, trucks, Argo cats, APCs, you name it. But despite this, the UK has never shown too much interest at the top level, as fitting them to tanks has simply more downsides than positive factors. The primary concern for the MOD is that at ranges at which a missile is effective, out to over 4,000 metres, the main gun was not effective. Thus you had a 40-ton tank, armour, ammunition and so on that was not being put to the best use. And at closer ranges, the tank's main gun was more effective and accurate, with a faster rate of fire and much more ammunition, and thus the missiles were redundant. They also added unneeded cost, maintenance, and if placed outside the vehicle were more vulnerable, and internally they took up valuable space, depleting the needs rounded for the tank, and added an extra risk if the tank was struck. However, history likes to repeat itself, and so every generation a new missile-gun combo is dreamt up and usually shot down. Back to the vehicle. Vickers felt that the lack of success in sales wasn't down to the concept, but rather the vehicle itself, which was a bit dated by 1970s standards. After all, the Mark I had been built for India on a budget and still retained features from the previous generation, such as the large external gun mantlet. What they wanted was a new, more modern look, but still cost-effective to the buyer, and so they began to work on the Mark II. Vickers drew up several plans. The first involved a new turret with increased ballistic properties, although the armour was thinner at 50mm, and a new hull with a distinct driver's blister shape. Yet, like the turret, this hull was half that of even the Mark I, with just 30mm or so. The sides were about 25 to 30 millimeters, as was the rear. Despite this, due to her shape and the overall area of material, it still weighed the same as the Vickers Mark I tank. The Mark II would retain the 105mm gun, but have a new fire control system, better crew comforts, and use the cupola from the Chieftain, as well as other parts. The Vickers main battle tank Mark II was to be equipped with a pair of swing fire missiles on the rear turret sides. These were ingressed into the turret sides so to offer the best protection from frontal fire and could be elevated up to 38 degrees. The first version was to also have the same Leyland L60 engine, TN12 gearbox and the suspension as the Vickers Mark I. However its primary difference was the unusual blister like driver's position with three periscopes fitted for a better field of view. A second version was to be fitted with the American GM Detroit diesel B12 turbo engine from the Vickers Mark I-I model. Firepower was the key factor in the design of the tank, and is expected to have 12 rounds a minute on the move and 15 rounds a minute when stationary. The gun depression was increased to minus 10 as well, a 3 degree improvement over the Mark I. A modern fire control system and infrared day and night systems for the crew, as well as a large infrared spotlight could be fitted. The biggest change to the Mark II was the driver's position, which had, as we said, this distinct driver's blister. Quite why this was done is a bit of a mystery. It could be they thought it added extra ballistic properties against lower calibre rounds. Although displayed prominently on the first plans and models, 
it is the key identifying aspect of this vehicle. It would subside to a smooth bulge and then be removed entirely on the Mark III. Otherwise the hull remains the same, with six road wheels in pairs each side, with a front idler and a rear sprocket, and carried over a torsion bar suspension. The Vickers Mark II was never built however, as work on this vehicle switched over quite quickly to a new vehicle, the Vickers Mark III. The turret carried over, as well as the American engine, and a slightly modified hull, but the driver's blister vanished. Early brochures and sales material for the Mark III began to be drawn while the Mark II was still in the design phase, and the brochures actually used the Mark II in their material, just renamed Mark III. And so the Vickers Mark II became a sort of transitional hybrid between the Mark I and the Mark III, rather than its own distinct vehicle. But we can discuss the Mark III in another video, as there are quite a few versions of that and it's sold to several countries. Well guys, this was just a short little one for you. If you did like it, give us a like and subscribe. We'll work to keep you posted on new vehicles and videos, but each one requires quite a lot of research and digging out the actual stuff from archives, as well as getting the best images we can for you. So until next time, toodle pip.